All right, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So I wanna do this series on masculinity to talk about what is masculinity and what does it mean to be a man? And so kicking off this series of conversations that I'm planning to have with, hopefully um, I'm looking to interview, I would say maybe 50 to 100 guys to talk about what is masculinity and what, what is healthy masculinity and what does it mean to be a man. And so kicking off uh, the series is Trey John, who's a friend of mine's. Um, and uh, so I'm, let me go ahead and have him introduce himself, tell us a little bit about who he is, and then we'll get into this conversation about what is masculinity. As usual, don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to share the videos. Uh, and if you would also like to be interviewed, then hit me up. All right. So go ahead, Trejan. Tell us a little bit about yourself and let's get going. Well, first of all, Dr. Sheldon Smart, thank you for having me on your platform. It's a, quite an honor. Uh, my name is Trejan Cothran, and I currently am an up and coming entrepreneur. I have a logistics company and I own a trucking company. Uh, the trucking company is Heritage Trucking Group and the, the logistics company is Hazel Express Logistics. Uh, with the trucking company, we haul general freight throughout the country. Um, we are actively looking for drivers. So if you are in need, if you possess a CDL, if you're a CDL holder or you do not hold, hold a CDL but looking to get into the industry, um, we also train with that as well. So. Feel free to contact me, um, and yeah, yeah. And so I'll leave I'll leave his uh, Instagram handle uh, in the description, and so that if if anyone's interested, they'll be they'll be able to to get a hold of you. All right. So, well, let's get into this. I, I have a couple questions that I wrote down. I would say maybe about six or seven, uh, just kind of as a guide uh, that we could use while we're talking about you know, this whole idea of manhood and masculinity. But mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I want to start off by asking you in what does it mean to be a man? What does that mean to you when someone, sa someone says you're a man? What does it mean to be a man? Um, to be a man is pretty much, you know, for me is I look at, I mean, it's, a, it's just so many different ways to answer that question, but, you know, in, in, in entirety, it's like, you kind of got everything together, you're stable, you, uh, it, it kind of go hand, hand in hand with the masculinity, thing, you know, um, but definitely you, you have yourself together, you are more independent, um, you hold your ground, you, you just, I don't know, that's a tough question, man, uh, to be a man is to be stable, courageous, dominant, um, respectable, you know? Um, yeah. All right, so use a couple of words that uh, I want you to expand on a little bit. So when you, when you say together, what do you mean? I, give us an example. Okay. So when, when you say together, what are you talking about? A man is together. What, what does that look like? stable he's financially stable he's um he has his priorities together um or i guess his priorities in line um he he doesn't really he depends on himself you know he may depend on others for certain things however but in the vast majority of it he depends on himself he's not uh, unstable looking for others to take care of him um looking for others to do things for him, maybe giving up easily or always telling himself he can't do something. He believes in himself. Um, yeah, so that's what I would say by together. Okay. So you, you also use the word courageous. Explain that for me. Is it, Does that have to do with the giving up? easily or when you say courageous what do you mean it has to do with the giving up easily but also just believing in himself that can be with anything in life not just it could be career oriented it could be believing in himself to 
lead his family. It could be believing himself to uh, uh, try new things. You know, it could be anything. But I think courageous is uh, something that he would need to be a man in his life because it's so much that happens in this world for a man or towards a man you know it's just like a man has to deal with a lot of things and you you know the the stigma the the stigmatism of you know we can't be weak you know so a man has to be courageous enough within himself or brave and believe in himself enough to adapt through everything that life has to offer mm -hmm. that 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 brings up a, a good and a good uh, question and and just got me kind of thinking because when you say a man's got to be courageous and yes you're you're correct there are a lot of stereotypes a uh, man is not supposed to be to be weak mm -hmm. and and that that just that word alone uh, could lead to a whole lot of other conversations in terms of when you say weak then what do you really mean but because yeah. you also say a man's got to deal with a lot of things uh, and so that's why it needs to be courageous. So could you expand on that just a little bit more? Uh, mm -hmm. What are some of those things uh, that you would say that will will then lead and will then lead to the man having to be courageous? But then also, what does courageousness look like? Because I think it could look differently depending on. Right. So, go so ahead. okay, so we can say how we were just talking about briefly talked on a man can't be weak, okay. quote unquote, can't be weak, right? But if a man uh, is courageous enough, he can be weak in the certain, the right times when it's, when it's needed, you know? He can show emotion, that's not considered being weak, but that's what I mean, like he can show his emotions. He's courageous enough and confident enough, secure enough within himself to be able to display those emotions at that time. Um, and what was the next question? I'm sorry. So, so, well, before we get to that, so just to be clear, because you, you are not saying that showing emotions is weak, correct? Right, okay. correct. And then what you're saying is that there is a time to when you can show those types of emotions, but it it obviously can't be all, <laughs> all the time. Right, right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so, so the man has to be courageous enough to be able to show those emotions because some men feel like, you know, hey, I could be feeling away right now. Mm -hmm. You know, let's say you hurt my feelings. You said something that genuinely hurt my feelings, right? And I felt as if I couldn't express that to you because I didn't want to appear weak. Okay. Like, you know, I don't, but you have to have enough courage or heart and yeah. uh, belief in yourself to be able to uh, display those feelings. And, and I can tell you in a certain way, I don't have to be, you know, crying or anything like yeah, that. Yeah. But I can tell you that in a certain way, or I can tell someone else in a certain way that I didn't appreciate what was said or done, or that actually hurt me in a, in a certain way, things like that. Yeah, and that, and that actually answers the other part of the question. So as you brought up, as you brought up crying, why do you think that it's so difficult for, for a lot of men <laughs> <laughs> to, to show emotion and to cry? I mean, we, you know, we're laughing about it. We're having a good time. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so difficult for a lot of men. What do you think that comes from where we can't? Because it's not weakness. You're correct. It's not weak. If I cry, it doesn't mean I'm weak. You know, right. I, you know, you might be able to get up the next day and go do something and somebody might say, oh, wow, this person is, man, you brave, you right. courageous. But but in that moment or in certain moments, why do you think it's it's so like so much of a taboo if yeah. a man is to shed tears and and it's associated with weakness? Yeah, I definitely believe uh, for society, you know, and and maybe the way you were raised, but, you know, with those two together, more so society mm -hmm. has everything to do with it. I feel like, you know, a lot of people look at a, a man as, you know, we could use a military man, for example, a Marine, you know, he's strong. Um, 
he, he, he doesn't have any fear. He doesn't have any, you know, he doesn't get soft or weak or anything like that. I don't, I, I just feel like that's a society standard of a man is not supposed to be weak. That's more of a female trait. Yeah. Or I'm sorry, not supposed to cry. That's more not supposed to cry. Yeah, more of a female trait. So then what do you think could be some of the repercussions for men who, I'm going to say literally like this, but it's not quite, I hope, hopefully you get what I'm trying to say. What do you, what do you think is the repercussion for a man who doesn't cry or is, or the man is not able to show, for a man who's not able to show his emotion, right? Which, which includes sometimes that he's actually going to shed a tear. What do you think is the repercussion or the psychological effect for someone then who does not feel comfortable to be able to explore that side of their humanity because they have it, they possess it? What do you think could be the, the effect of not being comfortable doing that? I think that that person will probably deal with. And have you dealt with it? To put okay, you on the spot. I, okay, I think that that person will probably deal with some mental health issues, probably some depression. Um, I feel like for a while, yeah, I, I, I was in a position where I was unable to show my emotions or not, yeah, unable to show my emotions and definitely wouldn't want to cry in front of no one. You know, you don't want anyone to see you weak. Um, yeah, but I, I, I feel like that comes from like not receiving proper love. You know, I feel like when, if you encounter someone who genuinely loves you and, and for a man, I think it would have to be another a female, of course, you know, uh, but someone who loves you enough to, uh, work with you and can bring that side out of you and, um, you know, let you know that it's it's safe for you to experience those those feelings and those emotions. I think that if a man don't experience that, he probably won't ever be able to genuinely receive or you know experience proper or real love. That's, yeah, that's that's interesting take. Yeah. So as as you're talking about the role of love, uh. And I'm thinking, what does that look like? That role of love in the life of a male, right? From from an early age, what does what does that look like? And what it what did it look like or not look like for you in terms of what played the role in you not being able to be to sh to you know show certain types of emotions. Yeah, uh, we're I think, getting deep. We're getting yeah, deep. We, we are getting deep, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, for me, I, I think it made me more of a giver and less of a receiver. You know, I was, I was, I was able to give a lot, a lot of love and things like that, but it made it kind of hard to receive it. You know, um, so I think, I think, yeah, that played a and, and and so why why did it make it difficult to receive? I would probably they, they say it. never ask good questions. Never start with why, but I'm gonna go here. So why why did it make it difficult to uh to receive? Yeah, I mean, I would probably I don't know maybe block the love or just I wouldn't be receptive. You know, like it was just I, I think it all kind of goes hand in hand with. You know, if you you can't, you're not maybe courageous enough to experience. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That love that's being like that brought to you. You know, so you will you will shy away from it. You are you're not receptive enough to it. And unfortunately, you're probably gonna end up either you're gonna learn, <laughs> or you're gonna probably lose that person. Yeah. You know? So, so is it a matter of trust? Yeah, because definitely. you because you haven't seen what love looks like. 
Right. And so, okay, so so is it that you understand what love is so that you're able to give it, mm -hmm. but you've never received it, so you're not able to accept it? Yeah, but I, I think what you were about to say, were like, I don't know what it looks like. So can you, yeah. what you're about to say, yeah, so yeah. I think that plays a role too. You know, I didn't come from like, I came from a single mother household. So when it came to uh, just kind of seeing real love, my perception was different, you know? And I think that also played a role in, in the way I dealt with relationships or how I quote unquote received love. Mm -hmm. or handled love yeah so and we'll get to the relationship stuff in a little while but what about how it generally affected you how has it generally affected you because you've talked about how it's affected you as far as your relationship with someone else but how has it affected you internally oh um, not, not seeing you know you know it's it's like you you have a friend and you go mm -hmm. to their house for thanksgiving and then when you go to the house of Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. you see the dad kiss the son. And right. They hug each other and you see, and you're like, ooh, this is, <laughs> what's yeah, going I, mean, I don't see any of this. How, how did right. all that affect you? Like, Yeah, it made me not be able to accept, uh, accept love from family as well. Like, mm -hmm. you know, actually a few years ago, I went um, to visit some family and, uh, my uncle, he, he kissed me a few times on the cheek, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and so... <laughs> it's like, oh! <laughs> yeah, but, you know, growing up, I didn't, you know, I didn't really receive that. My father was, you know, in another state. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I didn't spend a lot of time with my father growing up. So it was just new. It was like, you know, I kind of felt uncomfortable, but you know, I understood it as well. So I didn't get like defensive or anything. Yeah. But I, you know, in the beginning, I'm like, yo, why do you keep kissing? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I did feel a little uncomfortable, but, you know, when you look around at some families, that's, you know, that's how they express their love and it's, yeah. it's genuine love and it do yeah. make you feel love. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you have family members hugging you or, you know, kissing you or just showing you affection from, you know, just love, you feel love, you know? So, um, yeah, I think that yeah. definitely played a part with me just um, not being able to receive love from other family members as well. What, is, what does healthy masculinity look like to you? Healthy uh, masculinity, what does that look like? First of all, what is, what, what, what's masculinity? You know, right. masculinity. And, is, yeah, manhood is one thing or malehood is one thing, but what's, What's masculinity and then what what does a healthy what does healthy masculinity look like right um so masculinity i want to say alpha but i also i, I think i want to say that with what is a man mm -hmm. but it does it definitely leads over to masculinity um in, in terms of being a leader um masculinity is being more so for a man of uh, being a leader Maybe maybe uh, physically toned, um, well groomed. I think uh, been a mastery. Someone who's you know they have a they're skillful. Um, maybe survival skills, um, educated, and purposeful. Okay. So how do you develop that? Because you you do realize in a lot of uh because you've also come from a community that and from a family where you're not rich mm -hmm. right and so there are all these outside influences uh how do you develop that sense of healthy manhood or healthy mis uh, masculinity what are some things that someone can do to if they want to get better if they want to be courageous mm -hmm. and they want to move beyond where they currently are in their life whoa yeah what can they do? Uh, it definitely starts with yourself. You just gotta, you know, almost talk to yourself sometimes, you know, yeah, and just self talk. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. You gotta definitely talk to yourself and 
you got to visualize your life. You got to see what you want your life to look like. Um, maybe find someone rather on TV or not, maybe find someone that you kind of idolize and say, you know, I kind of want my life to, you know, be similar or mirror that. And what do I need to get there? And maybe watch, if it's someone on TV, mm -hmm. I would watch uh, interviews of, you know, him or this person describing his life and what he went through uh, to get to where he is now. Mm -hmm. Also, there's so many podcasts out there um, that I would listen to uh, one of which would be like alpha male strategies, good guy. Um, you know, and everybody have their own opinions and something. Yeah. Not everything he says is correct, you know, but yeah. um, it's all about, you know, self work. And you listen mm -hmm. to these people, you're like, man, you know, he went through all that to kind of, you know, get to where he is. And I'm dealing with this and I'm dealing with that. Mm -hmm. And if I want my life to look like him or um, someone else, like, I would I would mirror that pattern if it fits to what I'm dealing with or in my life, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but most importantly, definitely self work, self talk. Yeah, and you got to do it. It's an everyday thing. Like you have to do it every day because in the beginning, it's not gonna, you know, it's not easy. It's not yeah an overnight thing. It's a process. So you know, so we we talk obviously a lot. Uh, and then when we talk, you know, one of my uh, hot button issues is uh -huh. see stuff going on in the news. And and right. recently, you know, I've seen there's so many young men and, uh, you know, unfortunately, see, you've seen so many men that look like us, young, black, right. men, 14, 15, 16, a lot of gun violence in New York, Chicago, mm -hmm. Minnesota. Philly, New Orleans, I mean, you name it. Um, right. And you realize some of them come from good homes, right? Uh, right. Or, or maybe all of them come from a good home. Uh, right. But the thing is, where do you think all of that is? What, what do you think is going on there? What do you think is, because, uh, you know, unfortunately, yes, a lot of them come from tough, struggling communities. And mm -hmm. so what do you think is going on in those communities, it's causing a lot of these, they're killing each other, right? Mm -hmm. You're seeing killing each other every week. Uh, what is their sense of masculinity? What do you think they're seeing or not? Are they being affected by music? Are they affected by this? Is it just a lack of positive influences uh, based on what they see every day? Uh, what is making them so easy to take a life? What, what's your opinion of that? Um, I think, I think it can be a, an abundance of things. I think it can be definitely the music, um, maybe even the movies and video games that they play and watch. Yeah. Um, I think it comes from comfort. And by that, I mean, you know, I, I feel like we, and, you know, Black people, white people, Asians, Mexicans, you name it. But everybody stays in their community and when they see other people, they don't really, they're more so uncomfortable than comfortable. So um, when it comes to doing crime, we, we're comfortable in our own area, in our own neighborhood. So that's where our crime is gonna be committed at. Um, and that's where the violence is gonna be committed at. So, I think it comes from a lot of things. It definitely is the community, um, the by being just just poor, you know, not having uh, a lot of access to things, and so in a sense, it becomes jealousy in a way when you when you have access to certain things or your family gave you more access to things yeah. than their family gave, and now you have all of this combined you got the music the movies the comfort you know if you if you were if you weren't comfortable there then if you were able to go somewhere else and commit those crimes then it wouldn't happen in your own neighborhood but that's mm -hmm. where you are the majority of the time so you have everything going on in your head and i think that's what happens but definitely you know the music and the movies is what we see so and it reflects that 
So it makes it more of a thing to do. You know, growing up, a lot of kids don't have dreams to go do other things with their life that's actually a career, you know? Some kids, they idolize the uncles that's on the block mm -hmm. making money from selling drugs. And that's the next best thing to do, you know? So it's just a pattern. Yeah. And, you know, it's one of those situations where it's, it's hard for you to dream uh, about something that seems perhaps kind of magical if mm -hmm. all you see around you is negativity or right you know a lack of positive role models or whatever the case is it's hard for you to life the stuff you see on tv almost seems like foreign it's like in another country it could be right mm -hmm. here in the u.s but it seems like so far away because that's not what you see when you walk to school or when you walk down the street or anything like that that's not your everyday experience it's mm -hmm. not the stuff you see on TV. And I think that's why it's so difficult for some people to dream. And then in the, the, the language that's used a lot of times in the home might not have a lot to do with dreaming. It might have to do with surviving it's, right. or how we're going to pay the bills. How are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? It's one of struggle. Mm -hmm. It's not one of always picturing opportunities and all that type of stuff. And sometimes that I think, because language helps to paint a picture. Mm -hmm. And if the everyday language is not always one, and some parents in difficult situations are able to do it really well, and some right. people are not because they're just not equipped uh, for that. They spend most of the time working or whatever the case is. So, you know, there are a lot mm -hmm. of challenges there. So anyway, uh, well, I want to close by asking you a question. So what does it mean to be a good man? You know, taking, taking all of what we talked about into consideration. What, what does it mean to be a good man? Um, well, I, I would think that you would possess those traits that I named earlier, but you would use them to your advantage and you would use them to um, basically lead your family. If you're educated, you also educate your family. If you have survival skills, you make sure that you know your family can survive in different types of situations, climates, things like that. Uh, if you are purposeful and you are well groomed, you make sure that your family has a purpose, individual and as a unit, and um, you keep your family well groomed as well. You know, you send your children out the home looking nice. Your your woman, your wife is well kept, and she's looking beautiful. Look, you know, reflecting you as in your family as the woman of the household, and when you leave the house as the man of the household, you're reflecting her and your family. Um, respect them so um yeah and i definitely think that a man should also you know give back to his community so i a good man will those skills also doesn't just stay in the household it, it stay it goes through the community it goes through his relatives and things like that so he's always dropping his seed and everything that he touches you know or you know his knowledge and everything that he tells yeah. so, um, I definitely think that, yeah. All right, good. All right, thank you very much. Again, I will leave your Instagram handle below. Thank you for the conversation. Hopefully, uh, we'll be back and we could talk about a lot more, a lot more things. Okay. Uh, sure. Y'all, don't yeah. forget to subscribe, hit the like button, share the video. A lot more. As I said, this is something that I'm going to be doing over the next year. My goal is to talk to hopefully 100 men to just about what is masculinity, have the same conversation, maybe a couple of different questions, kind of understand what's going on. Maybe eventually this might lead to me writing some kind of book on the topic uh, or some, you know, something along those lines. So thank you all for watching. Uh, thank you again for sitting down with me for the interview. And until next time, be good. Peace. Thank you.